Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando, that's Corey, and today we're doing 1985's No Retreat, No Surrender. Before we get started, if you want to follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, you can follow us at Kiss the Reviews. And let's get into the cast of 1985's No Retreat, No Surrender. This film stars Kurt McKinney as Jason Stilwell, Jean-Claude Van Damme as Ivan Krasinski, the Russian, and J.W. Fails as R.J. Madison. Dude, okay, I gotta say this. I I saw this movie as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And I, do you ever see a movie and you're like, you don't remember it until you're about 10 minutes in, you're like, oh yeah, this one. That's that's the, the that's what happened to me here. When they move for no reason, basically <laughs> up the entire coast of the United States, and he's setting up the karate shit in the garage. And I was like, oh, and I saw like the the wooden man thing. I was like, I remember this movie. Not gonna lie, I was very young and impressionable, and apparently I liked karate. <laughs> so I was like, cool. I like the karate kid. I like this. Awesome, whatever. This movie is terrible. And can I just tell you, they did RJ dirty as hell in this movie. <laughs> what gives anyway? This movie, this movie's so bad. So bad. But it will, we'll... and it's not even really about karate. It's like this kid learns through karate that he's a homosexual. <laughs> okay. Okay, because well, there's a there's a sex scene I didn't think existed in the eighties in this movie, and they play it for a minute in the middle of a montage, and I'm like, "What the fuck am I watching, bro?" We'll get to that scene. That's some cock riding that I've never seen. He's side saddling, bro. He's side saddling that dick. Hell yes! I thought you could only pull that off in Red Dead Redemption. I didn't know you could actually do that on a penis. That's amazing. Apparently you can. I've never seen it before. This is the first time. So thanks, no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> um, but dude, let's get into this thing. Cause th dude, this thing is just ridiculous off the bat. And for the eighties, cause uh, the karate kid came out in 84, right? Mm -hmm. This comes out in 85. And what I think happened was they saw the success of karate kid and went, Cool. We'll do a, basically a, a kind of a ripoff where like we're I don't know what was going on in the 80s, but every like in every one of these movies, it was like, we're going to steal your dojo and we're taking over all the dojos across America. Was, yeah, like, it's a, was that an untapped market in 85? Yeah, the, the whole plot revolves around this complex karate slash real estate scheme. That I just simply do not understand. I didn't get it at all. And amongst the other things, and we'll get to it, but this movie here opens with shots of the city in LA, the karate school with some great keyboard and guitar solo music happening. And then we cut to karate class with Sensei Stillwell and uh, a bunch of kids. And there's always one old ass dudes in these karate classes. It's like everybody's 15 or younger. And then there's one dude with like a Wilford Brimley mustache. And he's just mm -hmm. like, Kia, like, check oh, yeah. sugar somebody's and check it often. Somebody's always uh, uh, pulling a Kramer in this <laughs> and just, yeah, 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 just fucking up eight year olds. Which I salute. That's how I learned karate. Yeah, Clearly, absolutely. you can tell by my perfect form. <laughs> I fought eight-year-olds my whole life. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. All I kept seeing was this youth pastor leading a karate class. And I was just, I was so taken back. This guy, I don't even know what the fuck to say, bro. He Listen, looked like the dude from Phantasm. This guy should have played... And he might have, I don't know, but he should have played a major role in Seventh Heaven. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Sensei George as <laughs> Pastor Bill on this week's episode of Seventh Heaven. One Tree uh, Hill, a very special episode. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, the fuck and, out of here. And and Jason here shows off some of his like spastic Bruce Lee moves, and he gets scolded by his dad, who's the sensei. And then we enter Ivan the Russian and his crew trying to get the sensei to join their organization, and he declines their offer. I must decline your offer. And he gets the shit kicked out of him by JCVD who breaks his leg, which a couple of things here. First of all, he's like, my leg's broken and it's bent like this. He's just bending it at the knee and he's like, ow, my legs. I'm like, you're grabbing your knee. Your leg's bent. It's not broken. What are we doing here? And this kicks off all of the horrible acting. We don't make fun of acting here. However, no. this deserves it. This was like, I don't know, like just it was like an open mic night. The whole movie. It was just like anybody yeah. who wanted to have lines in this movie could have lines. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, uh, like Armando said, we don't we don't shit on actors because our main point here is we can't do it. Yeah, 100%. But after acting like I give a shit about all of these goddamn John Claude Van Damme movies, I think I have a right to say whatever the fuck I want about somebody's acting. And I have to say, this is terrible. <laughs> I decline this offer. I must decline your offer. That dude came, cool. that dude like literally came up in porn. Yes. He, he's a male porn actor. And he was Listen. just on the cheap, and he like he's one of those typical like boogie nights guys who just knew karate and porn. You were correct. Well, my favorite is the next scene, right? Because it cuts to the the sensei in the hospital, and he's got his giant cast on, and it's you know up in a sling, and he he gives exposition through a voiceover, and it's like his thoughts. All the major dojos as fronts for organized crime. I know they'll be bad. Oh, he's doing thinky faces the whole time. <laughs> Which is really just him trying to work out his lockjaw. He's just moving his jaw around a lot. You were right. So we get thinky faces, <laughs> exposition of, through voiceover. And then he decides because, like, you know, he gets his ass kicked and his leg broken and his shoes, coat, and his hat took in. And then, so he closes the, the, the dojo and they move from LA to Seattle. They literally move the, up the entire coast of the United States to get away from like the Russian slash Italian New York City mob dojo real estate guys. So Donald like, Trump. <laughs> I'm going to take all your dojos. <laughs> Hi-ya! I have the best hayas. I do the best chops and kicks. <laughs> but he just said, not, I'm going to close down the dojo. Not, I'm going to, you know what, maybe a new career choice. Something along those lines. No, we're leaving the fucking city. Not even the oh. city to move to the suburbs. We're mo We're moving out of the state. They were close to moving out of the country. Another few hundred miles, they're in Canada. Yeah, dude, like straight up, this guy has no business teaching karate. He should be teaching, he should be teaching women how to blow a rape whistle and run in the opposite direction because that's what he's good at. And let's not forget, apparently, too, when he tucks tail and run, he loses all of his health insurance because this motherfucker is caning it the rest of the movie. Yes. He has to walk with a fucking cane. The rest, I don't know if you know this, but outside of, I don't know, the 1800s, we figured out how to take care of broken legs. We're good. Yeah. You're in a cast for like even in 85, what, eight weeks? 10 weeks yeah. max back yeah. then? And then you were good. You go through some rehab and then you're done. But whatever. So let's move to Seattle because. Because plot points and things, because that's where Bruce Lee's buried. So they get to Seattle and Jason meets RJ with some cool b-ball moves. 
And apparently Fatty Arbuckle lives in the neighborhood too. And I have no idea what the fuck is going on with this whole break into karate boogaloo scene. But like they go like RJ and Jason go into the garage and he was like, oh, Kia. And you like know karate and shit. And okay, this is almost like 16 Candles where they play a gong every time an Asian shows up on screen. Like anytime RJ shows up on screen, he was like, I'm here to tell you, ha 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 ha, karate moves. Well, I dance a bit and I'm really quick. I rock to the beat so viciously. Why you go imitating Bruce Lee? I like and you could tell white people edited this piece because his his little like rap that he does is it in time with the music that's going no. on? I was like, did a 70 year old white dude edit this and put the music layered on top of it? This motherfucker wishes he could flow like Curtis Blow. There's no way. By the way, I just put together a rhyme better than RJ does throughout this whole movie. RJ is the Nick Cannon of the 80s when it comes to rap. Dude. dude. Just I will say. There. His Jerry curl was tight though. Uh, his, he, he had, he had oh, some yeah. good locks. He had some good locks going. But so after this, we cut to Jason here practicing his karate in the garage, and Chubby Checker chasing after RJ apparently because he's black. Like yep. I get, I think that's the thing because in a couple mm -hmm. of scenes, um, it's the the like the they're in that restaurant. He's sloppily eating a hamburger because that's the joke. Apparently, he's just fat, and fat people can't just fit food in their mouth. It's got to go all over their face. Yes, so, they're, they're disgusting monsters. And one of his like friends and his crew is like, "Hey man, why don't you like AJ? Like, what's what's up with that dog?" And he was like, "I got my reasons." I was like, "Yeah, your reason is he's black." Because if the writers, it's one thing if you go, I got my reasons. And then it comes up later, he stole your girlfriend or he, you know, hit you with his car, whatever the hell the reason is. The reason never comes up. So one's to assume it's just because he's black. Yes. Yes. RJ then takes jason to bruce lee's grave where jason brings bruce lee flowers he talks to bruce lee's gravestone leaves the flowers and this is where we get this restaurant scene we have to talk about the whole gravesite scene <laughs> because this is where our main character does some straight up white person shit where he's like oh sensei lee slow your roll your dad the <laughs> pussy was your sensei two days ago now, all of a sudden, Ghost Bruce Lee is your sensei? That is presumptuous as fuck, sir. You don't just assume that. Why you had not? to go to another... You went to another fucking dojo and asked to be in there. Yet you go to Bruce Lee's grave and you're like, Hey, you fucking dead. You ain't got nothing going on. Sensei Lee, right? Teach me shit. I'm going to go the other way with this. And I'm going to say... Literally, dead Bruce Lee is the only one that would agree to be his sensei at this point in the movie. His dad doesn't even want to be his sensei anymore. He was no, like, I'm not even a sensei. I'm a bartender. Okay. Yeah. And this is how you know it's 1985. He's a bartender. The mom shows up. She's like sprinkled in throughout. Like you barely see her. But he's a bartender. The mom does whatever. And they own a house mm -hmm. in Seattle. That's how you know it's 1985. Well, yeah, that's what, how this fucking kid learned to be so presumptuous. His dad probably walked into a bank and said, hello, we're the whites. House, <laughs> my house keys, please. And they went, oh, of course, Mr. White. Here you go. At, so after visiting the gravesite, Scott and his crew of rat tail trash attack RJ in the parking lot. Until Jason comes in and he saves the day. He gets home and he gets yelled at by his dad for fighting. And he gets so mad that he goes to the garage to punch the not so heavy bag. This scene, you want to talk about, and I know we're like, oh, we don't talk about bad acting. You want to talk about bad acting? This scene, just show this scene. 
to anybody who's like, I kind of want to be an actor. I want to take some acting classes. Show this fight between Jason and his dad mm -hmm. as don't ever do any of this. And you want to be ashamed of yourself for fighting like some common sink punk. But no buts. Go to your room. <sighs> I'm not even going to blame the actors for a lot of this stuff because it might have just been the director and the actors taking like his direction literally. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if he was like, okay, in this scene, Jason, you're going to get mad at your dad and you're going to be like, hmm, I'm mad. And literally Jason was like, oh, just like that. Cool. Hmm, I'm mad. Like everything is like that. It's very stiff. There's like the acting is stiff. There's no, when you're having a conversation, there's this back and forth that you have. And all of their lines are very like truncated, like it stops and then there's a pause of about two seconds and then somebody else responds. And I'm like, did you not run these lines prior to? Like, how did you get the job? Yeah, I don't, this is just, it's, probably the worst acting we have seen to date and that includes silent night deadly night too oh 100 percent. <clears throat> this is this is out of all of the reviews we've done mm -hmm. jumping to the end here this is literally I, I, by leaps and bounds this is probably one of the worst movies we've reviewed oh yeah but 100 let's let's move on with the hits shall we Plowing so, through. So RJ then takes Jason to this local karate dojo where Ian Riley, this like super duper karate master guy, has his dojo. And he signs up for classes. But Fatty Arbuckle is also apparently a member at this dojo. And he sees them. And he goes and snitches on Jason to whoever the like the sensei is there. And the sensei then has Jason fight one of their best students because... Fatty Arbuckle tells the sensei that, like, he was talking trash about Seattle karate. And he was like, L.A. karate's better than Seattle karate. Like, fuck. Oh, I got two. I got two things. Two things. Mm -hmm. One. If this if this dude, Scott, I guess is his name. If, if Scott is a member of your dojo or you're a teacher at a high school and he's a student at said high school. Don't you know that this dude is just a lying douchebag? At some point, don't you just know that? Yeah. So, he's trying to play in this weird Eddie Haskell role that just doesn't work for him because he looks like a fat fucking liar. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just my distrust of all fat people, but <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why you didn't like me like a few years ago. Oh yeah. Until you <laughs> lost weight, I wanted nothing to do with you. You did not belong in my crew. You didn't fit. I uh, literally didn't fit. You yeah, literally. Uh, um no, and this is I think this is a good lesson with writing too, and and how you write characters. Because this backup sensei, I think his name is Dane or some bullshit fucking Dean, Seattle yeah, yeah, jerk Dean, off name. Dean or Zane or something, something like that. Yeah. Dickhead, whatever. So this character, right, we're first introduced to him when he walks out and meets Jason and RJ. And he grabs the application. He's like, oh, you're from L.A. He's perfectly nice. Yes. He's, he's actually kind. And like, oh, you know, jump in. We got a class going on. Totally friendly. And then the guy comes over and goes, he was talking trash about Seattle karate and L.A. karate's the best. And the guy just immediately does a 180 with his character. Yes. And is like, I got this. I'm going to fucking get this kid killed. And he's fighting nothing but our best black belts. Booyah, 16-year-old. I got you. Like, oh, and, can and, we, and, can... and my example against this is the Karate Kid, where you have John Kreese. Yes. Because he is a He's hard a... ass from start to finish. That is his character. That's who yep. he is. Even when he's trying to be kind in his own way, he thinks being a hard ass 
is being kind to you. Like he's teaching you something truly. Yes. yes. This guy out of fucking nowhere turns into a lunatic and just decides like, what's the main character's name? Fucking Jason. Yes. Jason is like my target for the rest of this movie. Why? Oh, yeah. Because he, he's from LA. He thinks LA karate is better. Allegedly. And then I saw him talking to an old friend of his. Um, who happens no. to be the girl I like. I'm I'm going to go ahead because this is my second issue with, mm -hmm. with this, with this guy, Dane, Zane, Blaine, whatever his name is. This motherfucker's 30. He's oh, every bit of 30. The next scene or one of the next scenes is Jason going to the birthday party of Kelly, who is mm -hmm. this Ian guy's sister his younger yeah. sister who's 17 mm -hmm. and blaine dane zane is like hey baby and he's kind of all and she's like dude get off me you're 30 you smell like old spice what the fuck cool and then like he sees jason like making out and i'm like i i got problems with a lot of this shit because a you're 30 it, that's that's statutory brother like pump the brakes okay pump the brakes or wait i don't know another year you got 12 months wait another 12 months and you're fine you're just you're just creepy at that point okay but it's not illegal my other issue with this is jason and kelly know each other how it's explained in this scene i was we met each other last summer when he was in LA, but he didn't know who her brother was. And then he sees her brother on TV. Like, dude, there's a lot going on. And I'm like, how the fuck did we get here? They were just like, well, he's got to be invited to the party. So he has to know her. And they just made some bullshit up. And they're like dating. Yeah, I don't know. It's like they met at camp. <laughs> and they never knew that they were going to get together again. And then I don't know. Lane Zane, Dane Cook decides he's going to fucking jump in and steal this girl's fucking virginity and has claimed her for himself. It's Dude, it's all so fucking weird and bizarre. Like, even the basic plot point of you know this girl, but you don't know who her brother is, and why haven't you contacted this girl since? Why have you just been like, hey, RJ, I don't know anybody in town. I just moved here. You know the hot girl in town. <laughs> why are you fucking around with RJ? And as we find out in the montage scene, he's exploring his sexuality. But Absolutely. Which, that's totally which fine. We'll get there soon. But first, we have Ian, who owns the dojo, Mm -hmm. And he gets a call from like the thug New York guys who are like, if you want to keep your dojo, you need to get down here right now. Look here, see, I'm a big time <laughs> karate mogul. See, I want your dojo. Man, man, I'm coming to get your dojo. I like karate. And he goes, he goes to the dojo. And these like fucking goombas are all at the, at the dojo. They're like, yeah, we're going to take over all the dojos in America. See? And he he gets into karate stance, and this is my favorite. So you get the back oh, and yeah. forth here, and at the the very last shot, because yes. he's walking, I was he's hoping you noticed it. He's walking them out, and he's still like this, mm -hmm. and he's doing like the little sidesteppy thing, and then they leave, and his left foot is still out in like the toe poke position, yep. and then he very slowly brings it back in. <laughs> Fucking Swan Lake in the dick out of this thing, man. Oh my god, he acted the shit out of this. This was amazing. Every and, and bit of it. Here's a here's a good PSA, I think, for everybody. Corey's Life Lessons! Hi kids, Uncle Corey here. Should you ever be in a situation where you're gonna get into a fight with somebody and they start doing that fucking acting karate shit on you? I know your first inclination is going to be like, ah, and then to beat the fuck out of them. Don't, because that motherfucker's crazy. 
Nobody in the real life fights like that, like ever. Yes. Don't like if somebody actually poses up like that and starts turning their ankle in, like, <laughs> get the fuck out of there now. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And a dude, and after this, it cuts back to the birthday party where Jason gets his ass kicked by Dean Zane Blaine. And so then he drives with his tattered, ripped clothing with punch stains on the back to Bruce Lee's grave so he can cry to Sensei Lee. And by the way, I think given the circumstances of his uh, impending relationship with a minor, I think it's fair that we just settle on the name Dane Cook. Hell yes. So Jason goes home here. We get more awkward acting and fighting with dad. His dad goes into the Fuck garage. Fuck you, dad! <laughs> Fuck you, dad! <laughs> he goes into the garage. He's like, no more karate. I decline karate. I must decline your offer. And he goes into the garage and he starts tearing shit down. He's throwing the magazines and like, I don't know, Jason's what in the back like, Dad, what are you doing? What do you mean, what is he doing? He said no more karate like 18 fucking times. He's tearing apart your fucking garage dojo, dipshit. I will, I will say this. His dad does have the best line here. And I'm not going to say I haven't used this before in the past. But um, when he's like, this is my house too. You can't do that. You can't just say I can't do things. And he was like, motherfucker, when you pay a bill in this bitch, mm -hmm. this is your house too. You just fucking live here. Okay. <laughs> this is and that's when Jason house. goes, cool. I live in Seattle now. Watch this. Runaway train, never coming back. He is out, son. He goes he is into out. an abandoned fucking goddamn trap house <laughs> and is chilling. <laughs> He goes Hillen. to RJ. He goes to RJ. And RJ's like, yo, I know this abandoned house. You can squat like a motherfucker and practice all your karate and do mushrooms and see Bruce Lee or do whatever the fuck it is that you white people do. Yeah, he got fucking, he's having a black mold fever dream for the rest of this movie. Dude, it is. And I'll tell you why. Because he goes to this house, he sets up all his karate shit, and he falls asleep. The candles are burning in this old abandoned house with obviously asbestos all over the wall. Some of that gets into his fucking nostrils and he breathes it in. It fucks with his brain. And then all of a sudden he sees lights and Bruce Lee or somebody who kind of sort of maybe doesn't even look like Bruce Lee, but he comes in and Bruce Lee starts teaching him karate or the ghost of Bruce Lee. And I got a question about this. He comes in. And it's, okay, I'll suspend disbelief. This is supposed to be Bruce Lee. Fine. He comes in, right? And he was like, hey, Jason, and yada, yada, I'm Sensei Lee, yada. And Jason has no idea who this Asian person is in the gi that just walked in. This is a guy he's been idolizing for years. He's got posters and magazines and all kinds of shit. And he was like, Sensei Lee. And that's just how we show how racist Jason is. <laughs> Are you RJ's friend? Ha hashtag stop Asian hate. There's a, there's one quick cutaway, right? Mm -hmm. Back to more of Jason training. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get the montage that you referenced earlier in the show. I'm going to give zero description of this scene. You know what, Corey? I'll let you give the description of this scene, and then I'll just put the clip over top. So take it away, buddy. Okay, well, let me, let me see how I can do this best. Let's go! So basically, what we get is Jason doing push-ups <laughs> like this. And what is missing from my lap and specifically right on top of my crotch is a teenage black boy's ass while eating like a dove ice cream bar oh, okay <laughs> i wasn't paying any attention to that because i was looking at the dick to asshole the... proximity because these two are in also thin as fuck oh. short as short fucking oh. 80s track clothes 
I'm telling you right now, they played just the tip. There's no you, way that listen, didn't happen. Jason shorts were so short when he's doing the rope pull up thing with the leg straight out. I saw his butthole. Like that's how short his shorts were. But the clip of RJ, it starts with just, it's here. It's like a tight shot on his face and he's laughing and he's eating ice cream. It's like, he's doing the old Eddie Murphy bit. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. And it, and it slowly pulls out. Jason does it. <laughs> Jason the does it. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> These two are young and in love and exploring every fucking crevice of each other's body. Hey. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of here for it. Uh, this was the best that's, part of the movie. <laughs> that's more believable than he just fucking met Kimberly at camp and then fucking decided to call her one day. But... And before that, we get the, like, and I said, we, we have Jason's dad bartending because apparently he's a bartender and he doesn't do karate anymore. And he gets like bullied by the guy at the bar. And then he's like, the guy at the bar is like, ah, I'll get you my, my pretty whatever. And he throws him out. And then from after the montages, it cuts back to Jason's dad leaving the bar and the, the, the guy and his crew circle him in the parking lot and he's like you threw me out and now we're gonna give you what for and so they all just start attacking him and his dad was a sensei he didn't forget karate mm -mm. apparently he was just bad at karate because he gets fucked up by these guys oh well, he's a fucking pacifist now <laughs> Until Jason comes in, and this is my best part. Jason comes in, starts fucking, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee's my fucking sensei. Whatever. He fucks everybody up. And then his dad's like, I think I learned a little bit of a lesson. Like, sometimes fighting is okay when you're defending yourself. Thanks, son. That's what you said to start the fucking movie. It's for defense only. What in the hell? Thanks, son. I never looked at it that way. It took me watching you beat the shit out of seven grown men and saving my life before I really realized that, you know, defending myself could give me some self-respect again. Fucking dickhead. I hated this Mormon dad. I did, dude, he was horrible. He was horrible. Fucking and, jerk off. Go and, go on your mission to fucking Australia, dickhead. Get out of get out of my get out of my country, softy. Well, and after this, because the, the end of the movie is, you know, obviously you have to have a big fight because it's a karate movie. So, but between this scene. Unless it's sidekicks. Then you just break <laughs> bricks. <laughs> but between this scene and the end of fight scene, there's a random dance club break. They go into the dance club and obviously the only other two black people that live in Seattle, RJ knows them and they're break dancing, of course, in the club. Even though they're like 40 years older than he is. <laughs> I, I was like, are they his parents? Dude, the guy looks like the one of the barbers from Coming to America. It's insane he's so old that he's in uh, this fucking club. He should be embarrassed he's in this motherfucking club in red leather with his age. <laughs> You should be at yeah. home drinking Ovaltine and getting a good, honest night's Dude, rest. I'm pretty sure these two were the people that Eddie Murphy was laughing at walking down the street in Beverly Hills in Beverly Hills Cop. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. And I like what RJ does here because he teaches a lesson to everyone at large. He goes up to his two black friends that he knows because, as you said, he has to know them. So... RJ goes up to them. He says, okay, dude, old ass dude who's collecting social security and shouldn't be in this fucking club. You go talk to Kelly. Go up and ask her to dance. You know smooth electro moves. And then you, lady, I know Jason's down to clown because he just fucked me in the butt like three montages ago. <laughs> so I know he'll dance with you. So he gets them together and then the, they start dancing and Jason and Kelly kiss. And RJ puts his arms around his friends and he says, you see, that's pimping. Because that's literally what he just did, was he pimped that bitch out. He did pimp that bitch out. He's fucking Cat Williams. He was like, that's pimping, yep. pimping. That's it. I was like, but, yo, RJ's pimp game is strong as fuck. And apparently the only reason that this scene had to exist was to set up the last scene, which is the fight. So 
Ian, and to show that Jason is not gay, he's bisexual. Yes, well, obviously. But Ian, in his dojo, then has to fight JCVD for the right to keep his dojo and own the Seattle market or whatever. So, Which, I'm like this, you're doing a shakedown in public on a microphone. How about this? So I have all of these witnesses around. Meh, let's let's fight for the dojo. No, how about I'm how about I call the dojo. cops? I call the cops and I have them show up. So when you make your little announcement, the cops are like, "So you're under arrest?" <laughs> this is like public racketeering. Like, oh this, yeah, this, you got they got them on fucking on Rico statutes. They're just like, guys. I mean. At least do it behind a closed door. What are we doing here? Dude, you're, this not is ba- like the fucking... you're not banging in a park. Do this shit behind closed doors, would you? <laughs> exactly. So JCVD has to fight three people from their dojo. And JCVD proceeds to fuck up the Seattle ship bricks or whatever they're called in literally the most hilarious ways possible. He's knocking people out the ring like... He's in Gladiator. I mean, he's just making these people look stupid. And then he gets Ian in the like the little rope, rope a dope thing. Yeah. And Kelly jumps on the thing with the stool and he grabs Kelly's hair. And this Jason cannot. Jason declines this offer. I must decline your offer. And he's like, I'm fighting JCVD now. So he jumps in the ring to fight JCVD. That's it. And, this is it. And the shakedown guys are like, totally legal. Totally legal. Like, we're, let me tell you something about like mobsters and gangsters. And I don't know a ton, but I do know this. I don't give a shit. They beat the three dudes up. If it even got, it doesn't get, they're not going to be like, let's fight for it. They're just going to come in with a gun and put it to your head until you piss your pants. And they're like, this thing is ours now. That's how this movie begins and ends. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And you forgot the scene where uh, the fat kid pops back in because he gets hungry and just starts biting Jean-Claude Van Damme's leg. Like, you're in karate, too. Yes. And you're sucker punching him. Punch him. If you put even half of your weight behind him, you're knocking his jaw the fuck out of alignment. I'll tell you that. Hell yeah. Puts, I mean, you got enough ass. Put it behind it. Mm-hmm. That's it. But, but JCVD's not black, so he's not going to beat him up. He's just going to eat him. Yes. So JCVD grabs Kelly by the hair. Jason has seen enough. So he jumps in the ring and he proceeds to use Bruce Lee's teaching and beating up sandbags to defeat JCVD and end of movie. And I I guess Ian gets to keep his dojo and they're all friends now or something. Yeah, and I don't know know why the flip kick is the thing that, like, I saw Shawn Michaels do that. I seen The Undertaker do that. Like, they catch your leg and you're fucking, wah, kick them with the other leg and you, ah, around my feet. I've seen people do that and they're not Bruce Lee. Well, back in Nor 85. Nor are they Masters. Back in 85, that wasn't really a thing. You didn't see a whole lot of flip kicks back then. I just, I don't, I don't, I would say, going out on a limb, the end of Bruce Lee's Learn Karate book has an end with flip kick a sandbag. Congratulations, you're a black belt. It ends with fucking two inch punch. Like that's the, like that's I don't dude. I don't know. There's not really much to say about this movie outside of the fact that it's ridiculous. If you want to, well, first of all, if you want to go down the rabbit hole trying to find this fucking movie, be my guest. But it's available on YouTube. Um, mm. but with that said. I guess if you want to laugh at absolute ridiculousness for an hour and 30 minutes, watch this movie. Um, I would suggest never watching it if you haven't. No, the only thing worse than this movie was fucking up and watching 20 minutes of riff tracks watching this movie. Because <laughs> them motherfuckers are lame. And I, I said it. <laughs> 
I couldn't agree more. I started watching that and too. I, I want the smoke. I <laughs> want the smoke. Dig it. I dig it. Uh, yeah, this, um, this movie, dude, this movie's terrible. And by the way, Damien, this is not a JCVD movie. JCVD's in this movie for all of 45 seconds. And he has, what, two speaking lines? You're taking some liberties with <laughs> what is a JCVD movie and what is yes. Like, we're about a week away from being like, watch the entire TV series Jag, because it has a J in its name, and so does Jean-Claude Van Damme. I'm getting sick of your shit, Damien. Clean it up. Be better. Be better, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. But yeah, th- I mean, that's all I got, man. Do you got anything else for this horrible movie? No, I retreat and I surrender. <laughs> Just Me like too. Jason's dad. I'm out. I yeah. decline this movie. I must decline your offer. For Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews. And this was 1985's No Retreat, No Surrender. <laughs>